the Dion shuffle follows. And I look at these people and say, I hope he dances three times a game. Third down and seven. Here comes the blitz. And Kramer is three to the football. Elkins have it. It's a live ball. And in for a touchdown. Short drop to Kelly Stauffer. And it's intercepted. Deion Sanders laterally to Tim McTire. This guy is controversial on some of the things he says, but when he gets on the field, he makes some unbelievable plays. Dix, Craig in the offense, throwing out of his own end zone and going for the bundle, looking for Brian Blades. It's up for grabs. McTire's with the interception. Hands it off to Sanders on the lateral. Sanders on his way. They go all the way. Only Craig. He's in. Touchdown Atlanta. For Denver and San Diego. First down to the 35. Sanders. The biggest rivalry that, that we had in Atlanta was with the New Orleans Saints, without a doubt. Never has an Atlanta New Orleans. This is Mongolian Mindset, and today we're going to be typing Deion Sanders, arguably one of the greatest athletes of all time. Um, we're going to be using Linda Barron's interaction styles and temperaments, combined with cognitive functions. We know Prime Time, Neon Dion, um, Coach Prime. Let's see what his personality type is. Uh, so let's go check and see what the monkeys got. The monkeys over at Personality Database has them as an ESTP. Okay, um, that's already I already know off the rip that's gonna be wrong because somebody is showboating as much as he, he is, or he talks as much shit as he does, or talks about like his achievements so much. We already know, if you watch us, you know we have cognitive function video. Um, if you want to. Um, get caught up on that. I think it's by far the best on YouTube on breaking down the actual cognitive functions. Um, just go to the playlist, cognitive function um, analysis, and watch those videos. But based off that, we already know that Dion is a TEFI user off rip. Like, I don't even need to play this game. Um, but um, the monkeys have him as an ESTP. That's uh, hilarious. Um, so these are our um, metrics that we're going to be using. Um, as we get them, we'll be explaining them as we go. Okay, uh, they have me as an ESTP with the chart here. ESTPs are direct, um, the outcome focus, so they look at the end product. Um, they're TIFE users, so they care about understanding and having empathy. Um, the, the, the understanding functions, as I like to call them. Um, they're SENI users, okay, and they're concrete, they're interest based, and uh, they're direct, okay. Um, I think I'm not missing anything. But if he meets those measures, we'll call him ESTP. But I already know he's going to be a TEF. I used to already know that. So, and guys, we are still doing the free uh, typing sessions by us. We have over 60 of them in the Mongolian live typing section um, playlist. Over 60, I think I have still like five or six to upload. Um, no one's really doing this. People are charging 100, 200, 500 bucks. We're doing this absolutely free. Um, you get to ask me any questions you want. Um, it's a great time to uh, just talk to me, talk to Shelly, um, hopefully talk to Thomas too. He's been busy lately, but hey, brother's got to do his thing. <clears throat> but um, all you have to do to do that is subscribe to the channel and join our either Facebook or Discord and message the moderator, Cody, and then Cody will get back to you with a available time for us. It's usually on the weekends, so get that while you can. We usually do four on a week, so if we're more than four, you may have to wait, so Get in line while you can. But we're going to be typing Dion. So comment below what you think Dion's um, personality type is. I feel as though this is going to be interesting. Yeah, in the house. And Coach Brian. I made it. I made it, ladies and gentlemen. I got Taylor here in the house in Colorado. I have made it. My mama was just here saying, can you text my mama and tell her I made it? Please. I am so happy to be here. You Thank are you. the draw. Honestly, I Thank feel you. thankful that you're even allowing us to be here. So, you know, I have been on the Dion Wave a very long time. Yeah, I have not been to have this. interview everybody. Yeah. Thank so you. I know what she's done. It's more S-E. S-E. Um, related there. Um, he is initiating. Oh, no, once you're here, I'm doing something. Hey, absolutely. You're doing everything. I'm doing something. You are the guy. Thank and you. So there's, there's so much to discuss. But I need to start with these sunglasses. Do okay. they hold special powers? Because, yeah, they do. Okay, they do. What are the powers? Matter of fact, I got you some. No. You don't think I don't. No. I don't think I don't. And I need you to rock them real quick. I, I got you. Oh, okay. girl. You look good. Ooh. You feel good. You feel good. It pays good. 
Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. They good? Yeah, they great. You like it? I know. I love it. Put me in, coach. Are you in? <laughs> <laughs> no, but okay. Tell me, what are the powers? Um, I love these. Just that, these that they, they, they come with an essence of confidence. It's like a, it's like that genese qua. Like you know that you know that you know. You got that. When you put those on, it, it's it's on. It's like it's popping. The music just start playing. Your theme music is playing, and they waiting for you to come down the runway. Ready. And you're you doing it. And I mean, you know, and you hear that. Getting a lot of you, 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 you. Um, usually when you see that, that is usually attached to S-E and N-I. Um, more S-E, but um, they're attached on a axis. So we're going to hit him for S-E and I here. Um, uh, in uh, SI would be talking about what like he like first person perspective, um, what he's doing, but he he's he's like telling you you you. That's so gonna be SE. From horse heels, like you galloping down the runway, and everybody's like, mm, they can't even clap because you they know you killing it, mm -hmm. and then they so insecure they look down at themselves and check themselves. You know, I felt that way. I said, wear my glasses. Got you. Wear my chain. I you mean, know, all you of know it. I had you. All the things. No, okay, so I have my own that I'm going to rock all right. the time, but where can everybody get these glasses? Um, blenders. Blenders. Blenders.com. I'm trying to make sure that they're available <laughs> but because I know they, they, they're they sold out right now, mm -hmm. but that's a blessing. That's a beautiful thing because we have the it. black and the gold pair. Yes. No, thank you so much for these. You have been just such a disruptor in this space in the best way. I think that you have really made everybody pay attention to what mm -hmm. is going on. What was college football before Coach Prime came on the um, scene, and what is it now? I, you know what? I don't think of myself as that. I think of myself as a person who's unapologetically himself. This unapologetically is himself. I'm going to say that's F.I., okay, unapologetically themselves. I can also say... Pragmatic on that. Okay. She doesn't give a damn. Um, pragmatic and there's a filative. Um, pragmatic people really don't. They're contrarian. They're rebellious. They don't really give a damn. They're going to break rules. A filative people aren't going to do that. They're more about the collective. They're about inclusion. They're about cooperation. Dion seems to be coming off pragmatic. Of the ordinary that I that I that I do like this is what I do everything I do I try to do it extraordinarily so not ordinarily I try to do it extraordinarily I try to have a commitment to excellence I try to do it with the way I do it with that Florida that 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 it you know that that confidence and that knowledge based on study and preparation that you can't ha you can't help but have confidence because you're prepared mm -hmm. so if that <sighs> causes people to be insecure so be it I know you likely had the utmost expectation of yourself mm -hmm. coming here mm -hmm. what was that expectation and have you in any way exceeded what that was I'm not never going to say we exceeded because I always find there's more to do like I get up probably about 440 every morning and I'm probably in the office about 515 something about that and I sit at the desk and prepare my morning word and, and pray and, and find a a good inspirational video for the team because we have meetings at 7.15 that actually starts at 7.10. So I'm ready because I, I, I want to energize and encourage and motivate my team as well as coaches and, and set us up on the right path for that day. Set so us it's up probably on the it, right it, path. The right path, that's N-I. Again, the right path. He's not talking about other paths. He's talking about the right path. And that did seem very systematic. Well, he's up, what, five o'clock or something every day, same thing. It's almost like the navigation of that day. We will have a theme, some type of theme of that day that we must go out there and conquer. What's been your favorite theme so far this season? Uh, personal. Mm -hmm. It's personal. Because that that applies to Tom, Dick, Harry, and Larry, and Mary, too. It, it's not just an athletic thing. It's so many things that we're holding back and and people have done we're so angry about yesterday that we can't even focus on today or tomorrow because we're crippled and we're afraid 
So something that happened that was personal has taken a toll on us as, as a people. Let's just take that power back. Mm -hmm. It's okay to make it personal because you gotta have something that drives you, that propels you, that energizes you, that injects you. So we're getting some U, U, S, E. You gotta have something to that nature. You but gotta have let's, this. Uh, let's keep it tight and keep it right because you gotta remain focused. Mm -hmm. You can't get so emotional that it, it gets you off balance. Yeah, yeah I, I never allow emotions to provoke me to make a decision. Uh -oh. And I never make decisions based on emotions. Oh, go back on that. What did we get here? That is interesting there. That propels you, that energizes you, that injects you. You gotta have something to that nature. But let's uh, let's keep it tight and keep it right because you gotta remain focused. Mm -hmm. You can't get- You have to remain focused and I- It's so emotional that it, it gets you off balance. Yeah, yeah I, I never allow emotions to provoke me to make a decision. Uh -oh. And I never make decisions based on emotions. Ooh. Ooh, that means we either have a, based off that phrase there, that just lets me know that we have somebody who's either strong in TE or strong in TI. Just off that phrase alone. So what is that balance then of knowing when something does feel more personal, but not letting it sway you internally? Yeah, because when you when, when it sways you, you start making decisions based on those emotions and those emotions ain't always right. It, it, it's, it's not justifiably right sometimes because it's the anger and anger is not a component of the goodness of God. Like you can't be angry and we want to be blessed simultaneously. So you got to just sit back and rock steady and say, okay, now what, what am I going to learn from this? Mm -hmm. What, what can I glean from this? How, how can I elevate from this? And once you figure that out and you learn the lesson, you'll stop stressing and then attack the blessing. So I want to talk about that personal... This motherfucker sound like he got everything scripted. ...element a little bit, because it feels like to me sometimes, at least from my vantage point, that when people will critique you mm -hmm. or your team, whatever they say, it almost always feels very personal. Yeah, it is. But it is only gets personal when insecurity plays a role. It only gets personal when someone feels that they're beneath and not equal. Talking about what other people feel, that's going to be F.E., too. It gets personal when someone realizes that they're not equipped with what you're equipped with. So now they got to attack that, 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 that problematic area in your life that they think is your weakness. And oftentimes it's not even your weakness. You Talking know about what they think, that's T-E-F-I. They think. That you allowed them to see. T-E. So that they could attack that. But it's so far away from your weakness that they have no idea. And you just sent, this, you sent them on a wild goose chase. Do you know when you've done you've this? Maybe made someone feel insecure? Yeah, I can see it. How? I can see it and I can hear it. I can see it in their face and I can hear it in their voice. And uh, it becomes so blatantly that because I treat people right. My mother raised me to a point where I'm always respectful. I'm always smiling. I'm always yes, sir, no, sir, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. And I want to find out that one thing in you that makes you smile to light you up. You know, I want you to feel better about yourself after we've had an encounter. So I know nine out of 10 days I'm straight. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> you ain't catch me on that one day because I wouldn't let you catch me on that one day because I'm not, I'm going to. I know me. At this age and stage in my life, I know me. I know not to come out when it's that one day, when it's that one time, when, when you see me naked. I, I'm not going to come out and allow you to do that. Mm -hmm. So I, I know how to handle me. But when you come at me like that, that is a problem with you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's been... Way too much you, you. I'm hearing it from S-E-N-I, okay. I'm going to go ahead and for S-E-N-I. Um, Dion, you're an S-E-N-I user. Okay. With that being said, that eliminates all the SI users. <sighs> and, uh, quite the three weeks for people that doubted you. Yeah. Because... yeah, but you know what? It's been longer. Yeah. It's, it's been longer. Actually, it's been a few years because what we accomplished uh, in high school was unprecedented. I mean, winning three state Talking titles. Talking about accomplishments, that's going to be linked to TE. 
unprecedented. What we accomplished, and you, even youth football, we won, won, won all over the country, and then we go to Jackson and, and, and simulate the same thing. So now, and we go to Jackson and simulate the same thing, simulate systematic. That we're here, people were thinking that we can duplicate. Talking about what people were thinking, T.E. What we did in Jackson, because Jackson, they felt like when the, the, the level that they thought it would be that Talking would. Talking about people thinking again, this guy's TEFI user. Grant them their uh, acclaim and affirmations. But football is football. Mm -hmm. People are people. Young men are young men. And so it's the same formula that we've been using for quite some time. The same formula that we've been using for quite some time. That's going to be systematic. So we got a TEFI user here. Okay, he's a TEFI. Okay. So with that being said, we're down to four types. We're looking at ISFP, ESFP, uh, ENTJ, or INTJ so far. We got a couple points for systematic here, and he does seem to be initiating here. So we're gonna we're gonna slowly try to break this down because I think this guy. So I want to talk about that might be one of the for a little bit. You've had three wins so far at Colorado. I want to mm -hmm. talk about them all. When you think about the first win, mm -hmm. okay, against TCU. Yeah. What did that win represent? We're here. Mm -hmm. it, it represented that hey hey, we're here. Okay. Stop overlooking us. Stop counting us out. Stop doubting us. We're here. Um, you 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 can feel it. You you can you can, you can feel it. You can that's S E. And they said you could you could criticize it. You 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 you. you. So that was like the tension grabber. That was like the trailer. You know how movies have a trailer. Yeah. That was the trailer of the. That's a T E comparison. Movie just getting you to the movie, getting you to the show, making sure you push uh, on demand or whatever you have. You just click all this. You push you this shit is all S E. Button, you want to see the real thing. That's what that was. Okay, week two. Mm -hmm. Went against the last yeah, that it, represent. That, that was tremendously personal. And that represented that I, like that I, you, you know, when somebody say something and, and, and they, they hit that nerve in you and you say, I, mm -hmm. and you know, in, in the African American vernacular, I could mean a multiplicity oh, of yeah. things. So it was like that. I, 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 and we went out there and uh, did what we we're supposed to do at the crib at home, and it was that I, we, we ain't playing. Mm -hmm. Like we told you, we we here now. We ain't playing. Win number three against Colorado. Resilience, resilience, because first of all, you have two magnificent wins back to back of that nature. Then, <laughs> Magnificent FI wins back to back, okay, achievements. You try to keep the team rocking steady because not everyone in the locker room, including coaches, have won in their careers and their lives. So you got to sense that and you got to feel that and you got to try to find a common thread to bring everybody and keep everybody together as one. Don't let no one get too high or too low and bring them all together. But you know, some, of going, some are going to go out there well beyond the, the point because they've never seen this much attention or this much focus or this much love or uh, this, this many followers in one week. Mm -hmm. Talking and about you, followers, that's going to be TFI popularity yet again. TFI. No, sooner or later you're going to have a hiccup. And I knew we would have. A so he's anticipating a hiccup there. That's good. anticipation. Anticipation goes under NI. Um, or you could just hit it for abstraction. A hiccup. <clears throat> I, I, I wanted to beat them down and blow them out, but I knew as a coach, the way we practiced, the way we prepared that week, we're going to have to fight. And, and what we did, did you learn from that hiccup? Resilience. Yeah. That we are resilient. We got some players that really take this game serious. We got some darn good coaches, but we got some personnel that, that uh, we got to flip, we got to change uh, uh, eventually. But we got the majority of those men on that field they want to win, and they love to play this game, and they love all the extra that comes with it. So despite these great wins, despite all the talent on this team, as I was prepping for this interview and when I would type in Colorado football, one of the things that auto fills is overhyped. Overhyped. People asking, is Colorado football overhyped? We, we don't hype 
ourselves. I mean, we chronicle everything. I keep receipts. Everybody knows that. I mean, my son is brilliant at that. <laughs> uh, we keep receipts, T E F I. Um, uh, shoot, Brian Video, we're doing a great job with the documentary. I mean, we do that because that brings attention to our team and to our fans and allow everyone to know the struggle and the challenges that we go through. Every, everything is just not rosy. Mm -hmm. But I don't feel that we're overhyped. Mm -hmm. I feel that we were underestimated, if anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. I feel, feel, I feel, F-I-F-I-F-I. -F -I -F -I. And you feel like the talent on this team does reflect the hype that yeah. the team receives? Yeah, I mean, the talent uh, is tremendous. We got some guys that are definitely going pro. I don't think that happened around here in quite some time. We don't have not one single practice without several pro scouts on board. This is all accomplishment, accomplishment, accomplishment. Right now, are you living in your purpose? Oh, I'm Dougie in my purpose. <laughs> Living. I'm doing <laughs> I'm nay naying, dugging, uh, prepping, uh, moonwalking. I'm doing a cabbage patch, whatever, whatever the dances they have now. But I'm doing all that because not only can in the midst of a crowd, in the midst of noise, I can hear God's voice. I can hear his whisper. So I know his voice, but not only that, I'm a father simultaneously. How can I get upset with anything that's transpiring when now I'm not only coaching, but I'm fathering and not just mine. I'm fathering a multitude of kids that I adore, that I, this ain't work to me. This is a calling to me. This is a beautiful journey to me. This is, this a is beautiful what I'm beautiful journey, to. progression. Uh-oh. This is what I, 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 I told the Lord I want it. And I he told, gave it to me. I the told reason. the Lord I want it and I, he gave it to me because he trusts me. He trusts that when you allow me to do my thing and to walk in my anointing with all the, the thoughts and the visuals and the, the, the expertise and the knowledge and the wisdom that you gave me, you know before they write the story, I'm going to give you the glory. Oh, that was good. That was very good. So, sorry. Hey, Sam, come here. Come here real quick, Sam. Tap me on come my on back. in, Sam. Tap, tap <laughs> Oh, that's what I'm talking. Thank you, Sam. All right, man. So I'm just gonna tell you the truth. Dion has a book that he says he writes quotes in, so he anticipates to be able to use these quotes. Okay, that's crazy. Appreciate Put it that. on that's a shirt, I need. Sam. I need that sometimes. <laughs> Appreciate that. Another thing you said that was very good, very true, is that some kids choose a university, but these kids choose Dion. What does it mean to choose Dion? Um. I think a multitude of kids choose the coach, especially when it's a prominent coach that have had success in their careers. You can play, play all you want to and say they chose this university. No, no, no. They signed up there because coach Nick Saban is a winner. And guess what he does? He is a pipeline to the NFL. So you can say all you want, you chose this university. No, you chose coach Saban. And I'm honest. I just had a parent asked me the other day. She said, "You do you think that, you know, if you left, that what you've created is is still, uh, what was the word? Like sustainable? Sustainable. You go, girl. You go, girl. <laughs> I got you. Go, you know that. And she's smart, too. All right? <laughs> sustainable. I said, no, Mom. It ain't. I'm not going to lie to you. I will cry to you for I lie to you, but it's not. Um, God anointed me for this time, this season, this, 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 this. this. You hear this shit? God anointed me for this season, this time. Oh boy, you got some. Oof. Is that FI child God complex? This era, this moment, he Is anointed that? me for this. And to coach your son and his son and his son, that's what God has anointed me to do. So this is my calling. So no, I don't think it is. Um, so knowing that, right? Mm -hmm. Knowing that in, in some ways you you are the master. So just thinking about that, and like sometimes when you're at, trying to figure out if somebody's concrete or abstract, do you believe this person believes in uh, the possibilities or you think this person lives in reality? It, you can pretty much tell that this guy does not live in reality, okay? There's no way. Magic. Is there like a pressure? I think he believe he can do anything. I, I think I'm not gonna say I am. I, I would say we are okay. because the most uh, 
the most beautiful thing that we've done here, and I think it goes without saying, and, and a lot of people don't recognize it, is we've built a tremendous staff. The Bible consistently says, that rod and that staff, they comfort me. I'm comforted by a tremendous staff. I was comforted by a tremendous staff all the way from youth, all the way up through Jackson and now here. And I love these guys and I got like-minded men. I chose men that are not only knowledgeable, but not only relatable and have relationships, but men that are great fathers. Why does that matter, Coach Prime? Because how are you gonna be a father and a mentor and a leader to these young men when you ain't even leading your child? So that's a stickler for me. It would be no one on my staff that's not a great father because that means something to me because they're going to see me with my young man and young. That means something to me if I. Women, my kids oftentimes, and they see how I am with them. So it's hard for me to they understand see, you trying to raise someone else's child and you're not even raising your own. That's a problem for me. And it seems like a lot of the standards that you set are just in line with mm. life values. Yes. In what ways do the way that people live their lives also mimic the ways that they will play football That's or it. be a football coach? You can be an idiot off the field. <laughs> you can be an idiot off the field, not an idiot on the field. It, 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 it don't work like that. You can't because you don't have the light switch inside and you, you, you can't turn that on and off. You can't um, not study... Yeah in your school work and, and bring back the adequate grades so that you not only are eligible, but you are on your way towards a degree and you ain't studying your playbook either. Because one, if you're not studying that, you're not studying that. And we, that's why we look for smart, tough, fast, disciplined young men with character. Smart, tough, fast. That was a T.I. statement there. That was a synergism. That's discipline with character and we don't balk on that. We've made some mistakes and we've let a few get slide, but I promise you this next recruiting cycle, we ain't let none slide because we've seen how that can affect us and infect us. So with your approach being so... I'd say that was future focus, anticipation there. Obviously this guy's pragmatic because he's S-E-N-I-T-E-F-I, -E -E so that's already gone. <sighs> all-encompassing mm -hmm. when this season is over how will you measure success what has to happen for you to say what we did this year mm -hmm. was success that's a great question let me tell you something um, in all the comings and goings that they've talked about in the an ignorant number of kids that so he's kind of directing the conversation but I think this guy's an INTJ which is nuts have come in and come out we had the highest GPA in the history of Colorado football. More fucking achievements. God damn, dude. TFI. Mm -hmm. In the history this spring. With all that going on. And right then now, I clapped with my feet. With my <laughs> feet. That's how excited I was because I don't play bad grades of dysfunction in the classroom. Because I'm wise enough to know that 85% of these young men ain't going pro. T-E, T-E. So I got to make sure they get the education. And they're, they're consistent with the values of life because I want them to walk out of here with a six-figure job. I and want this and I. Trying to have connectivity with several companies that they can. I envision a darn. Uh, I envision. It's abstract. Workforce draft. We have an NFL draft. We have an NBA draft. Why well, can't no. should they get the education? And they're they're consistent with the values of life because I want them to walk out of here with a six figure job. And I'm trying to have connectivity with several companies that they can. I envision a darn uh, workforce draft. No. We have an NFL draft. We have an NBA draft. Why can't we have a draft for the kids that play for me? And to all these different companies. You hear this shit. For the kids who play for me, this motherfucker. They're smart, tough, fast, disciplined, and they have character. So I, okay, they may not be a, a, a professional athlete. They may not could play for any of the leagues. They may not have that type of talent, but they have the ability in their leaders. Mm -hmm. yeah, so that's what. Oh, they that have all these qualities that translate in, in leadership abilities that translate into successful lifestyles. Because I want them to be great fathers, great men. 
you know, great husband. I want them to, to just be community leaders. I want to. I want this. I want that. I want this. I want that. And I, and I, and I desire. When they come back to Colorado, I want to smile and say that. That's my dog. Well, I told you you was going to be the governor one day. I told you that. <laughs> I told you you was going to be the governor one day. I'm going to say that's abstract yet again. Talking about pe the future. future and I have several of those young men that I can look at. I'm looking at them in my head right now, and they're going to be that. You see that? What happened? Again, I'm looking at that right now in my head, and they're going to be that. Okay. You've seen Woo! Just believing in something. We got an NTJ? Um, Deion Sanders. It Ain't that fucking them, crazy. It motivates them. Um, the Bible clearly says there's life and death in the power of the tongue. And I use the tongue to uplift you. I mean, when I say girl, girl, girl. You see what I'm saying? Like, like, like that's automatic. It's, and it's the same thing when a woman looks at a man and says, you go, boy. Boy, you, boy, you did that. Boy, you did that. I mean, and when I'm telling my kids, uh, we had an instance on the sideline, um, this last game where Jimmy was having a horrific game. He's a receiver, Jimmy Horn. And I said, Jimmy, you're a dog. We from Florida, man. And guess what? Pop is at the crib and he's incarcerated watching you right now. And he wants to clap in front of all his different inmates because he believes in his son. We gonna make Pop. You talking about any shit here? Talking about what Pop wants? I'm proud tonight. That's what we gonna do because his son is a dog. Now you go out there and show the world who you are. And in return, he went and caught the touchdown, the game time touchdown. And he was having a horrendous night, but just speaking life into Jimmy and understand where he was, where he, where he was located. I've been there because I sympathize and empathize with him. And I know his background. So he's, he's, he's actually sympathizing. He's not empathizing. He's sympathizing. That's F.I. Because you just said you've been through it. Empathizing is you don't have to have been went through it. And his situation so I'm able to pull that intangible out of him that I connect to him in a pivotal time like that and that's why I got to know my I got to know my kids I got to know this team I got to know them individually as well as collectively and those words have so much power yeah. who has spoken life into you um, a multitude of people I mean playing youth football this gentleman named coach Capel came to the other side of town and grabbed me Dave Capel he and his wife, Helen, uh, he's gone to be with the Lord now, but his wife, Helen, is still living. What they showed me, what they introduced me to was a different way of life because, you know, I lived on the side of town where drugs were rampant and drug dealers was, was stunned and doing their things, and I seen a whole nother side. This is all the fucking SE. Other side of town, just on the other side of town. And that changed my life where I saw long driveways. And I, never, I hadn't owned a home in 15, 20 years without a long driveway. Because I always stay, thought the longer your driveway, the longer your money. That's, yeah. that's what I always thought. <laughs> so, that's success that, right that, that, there. That's it. So <laughs> that gentleman, uh, what he did for my life, uh, you know, Coach Ron Hoover, my high school coach, he was a disciplinarian. He was tough, suspended me when I was a junior because I got suspended. And it wasn't even my fault. But I was thankful because it taught me about leadership mm. and how he didn't play favoritism. And when I went on to college, Coach Bowden and Coach Mickey Andrews, Mickey Andrews was a disciplinarian as well, a tough guy but a fair guy, mm. and kept the standard, the standard and the main thing, the main thing, was on your butt on that field. By the time he got off the field, how's the family? You just cussed me out. <laughs> now you're nice. You just cussed me out. I mean, but <laughs> I love him to life, and I talked to him during the bi-weekly. Yeah about just my team and, and how to handle certain situations and just onward and onward and onward to some of the people that have really spoken into my life. I mean, Bishop uh, Omar Jawar was my pastor that passed away uh, a few years back that really devastated me, but he was so, so critical to my, my calling and to my knowledge and my understanding of my calling. Now I got uh, Pastor Dewey Smith, you know, out of Atlanta. That's my dog. Yeah. And God couldn't have given me a better man um, that Pastor Omar has left. So he, he when we have coaches in life, like in, in sports, that gives us an advantage. Mm -hmm. And I wish every Tom, Dick, Harry, and Larry had life coaches because we've been tutored and mentored by some prominent, really good people. 
And that's why my spiritual coach is everything to me. Yeah. Because I want him to keep me straight. Like, I'm on navigational. So you got to keep me. You got to tell me, stay left, stay left, now, stay left. You know, or go right, go right. I mean, you got to tell me that. I got to hear that as well. Yeah. And I'm proud of that. So you have said that you save the prime persona for yeah. football. Who is prime? Who is Dion? Um, Dion is kind of recluse, um, calm, very uh, introverted. Really, oh, really, very. Oh, we got him. We got him. We knew it. We called his shit. Said that you save the prime persona for yeah. football. Who is prime? Who is Dion? Um, Dion is kind of recluse. Um, Dion is kind of recluse. Um, very uh, introverted. Very introverted. Really, mm. really, very introverted. Country boy with a city swag. Um, love the fish. Love you got some love the fish. That's F I. Loves uh, anonymity, if you could believe it. Um, anonymity, if you can believe that. Oh wow. Backseat. I want to pause there because I think there will likely be a lot of people that don't believe that. Yeah, that it, very that you recluse. like anonymity and being yeah, introverted. very recluse. I, I don't like crowds. Okay. I, I know how. I to don't like crowds. I show out in the crowd, but I don't really like crowds. I don't really function well in crowds, and you, you don't. I don't really function in crowds. Catch me in crowds most, un unless I'm in a game. But you won't never see me in that realm. Uh, Prime is totally different. Prime is that alter ego that we all have. That I just have had an opportunity to enact, to really put some legs on, and make him work. Okay, so we're getting abstract here, and we're getting alter ego. And we kind of fucking knew this this motherfucker was an INTJ. And who else was an INTJ who said something very similar to that? Let's see. I think it was Beyonce. Beyonce is her alter ego, Sasha Fierce. Uh, let's see. Oh, let's go. So, like, when you're getting ready to go on stage and perform, does Sasha Fierce, when does she show up? Usually when I hear the crowd, when I yeah. put on my stilettos, um, when, like, the, the moment right before when you're nervous and, and that other thing kind of takes over for you. Uh-huh. Then Sasha Fierce appears in my posture and, and the way I speak and everything is different. But no, is it, like, a process that happens, too? Like, you were talking about the high heels, like, once the lashes go on and Absolutely. the makeup and all that stuff. It's kind of like when I do a movie, becoming the character. Once you put on the wig and once yeah. you put on the clothes, you walk different. Yeah. It's, it's kind of this character that I've, I've created over the years. Uh-huh. Yeah. And how is Sasha Fierce different than I am? Well, I know, you know, definitely wearing that bodysuit, I can never walk out here and do yes. that. Does Sasha Fierce ever go home? Like, um, sometimes, but I... <laughs> <laughs> Not often, only, only on um, special she occasions. Never show up in... <laughs> yeah, she shows up sometimes in the house. Yes, <laughs> yeah. But definitely when I'm nervous or, or um, whenever I have to perform, whenever I have to do choreography or something that's difficult, and I, it's no different from anyone else. I feel like we all kind of have that, that thing yeah. that takes over when it's so... Oh, 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 wait, guys. Is she sounding like Dion here? She's sounding like Dion. Because I told my mother, you know, when I was seven, she, I was going to make a lot of money. She was going to never have to work. And I, I told my mother I was going to make a lot of money. That's my future. And I, as a kid. So way back then, defensive backs, they wouldn't slot it to do that so i had to create something that i know would and i created this character i had to create something abstract in my dormitory room in florida state and i just fed him and fed him and fed him and fed him and perfected him and uh it That's is progression what it is. so now I'm, I'm probably a blend of both right now because i went from prime time to just prime now coach prime is like i'm in the third quarter yeah. Progression, this motherfucker's getting a strike. Woo! And I'm, I'm high stepping. So, in some ways, was Prime sort of a persona that you had to adopt to be able yeah. to be different from? Um, no, it's something I had to adopt to command the resources that I promised my mother. Cornerbacks and defensive backs at that time didn't even make a meal. Um, Prime made us a meal, <laughs> the first ever. 
in the history of the NFL than the first two million and the first four million. Then the kids kept going crazy. Progression, progression, progression. So I'm thankful and I'm appreciative, but you got to understand, I, I, you can't get caught up in trick or treat. 365 days a year. You, you can't do that. Because you, sooner or later, you got to take your costume and your mask off and be who you are. So he's talking about the prime persona and himself. But see, that's the thing. I, I know who I am. Like at this age and stage, probably for the last 20 years, I've found my location and I know who I am, what I am, how I am, where I'm going, and I know how to get there. And I know how to get there. And I... So going off that, way back you guys catch in that? is when you said, they don't pay me to be humble. This... Right. Now it f- this is a crazy developed INTJ. No one would fucking see that shit. No one would fucking see that shit. No one would see that that this guy's an INTJ. Go back. I want to actually play that shit again for you. And fed him and perfected him. I will. And, um, love the fish. Loves uh, anonymity. Really good people. And that's why my spiritual coach is everything to me. Yeah. Because I want him to keep me straight. Like said that you save the prime persona for yeah. football. Who is prime? Who is Dion? Um, Dion is kind of recluse, um, calm, very uh, introverted. Really, mm-hmm. really very introverted. Country boy with a I'm TJ in disguise, uh, guys. Fish. Loves uh, oh god anonymity, if you could believe it. Um, wow. I want to pause there because I think there will likely be a lot of people that don't believe that. Yeah, that it, very that you recluse. Like anonymity and being yeah, introverted. very recluse. I, I don't like crowds. Okay. I, I know how to show out in the crowd, but I don't really like crowds. I don't really function well in crowds, and you you don't catch me in crowds most uh, unless I'm in a game. But you won't never see me in that realm. Uh, Prime is totally different. Prime is that alter ego that we all have, that I just have had an opportunity to enact, to really put some legs on and make... Sounds like progression, and that sounds like the same thing Beyonce said. It can work, because I told my mother, you know, when I was seven, she I was going to make a lot of money. She was going to... I told my mother when I was seven, and I, I was going to make a lot of money. work, And I saw way back then, defensive backs, they wouldn't slotted to do that so I had to create something that I know would and I created this character progression to a room in Florida State and I just fed him and fed him and fed him and fed him and perfected him and uh, it is what it is so now I'm, I'm probably a blend of both right now because I went from prime time to just prime now coach prime is like I'm in the third quarter and I'm winning and I'm high stepping so, in some ways, was Prime sort of a persona that you had to adopt? This is probably the most developed INTJ that I've ever seen. This is the most developed INTJ I have ever seen. To be able yeah. to be different from... Um, no, it's something I had to adopt to command the resources that I promised my mother. Cornerbacks and defensive backs at that time didn't even make a meal. Um, Prime made us a meal, <laughs> the first ever in the history of the NFL, then the first two million, then the first four million, then the kids kept going crazy. So I'm thankful and I'm appreciative, but you got to understand, I, I, you can't get caught up in trick or treat 365 days a year. You, you can't do that because you, sooner or later you got to take your costume and your mask off and be who you are. But see, that's the thing. I, I know who I am. Like at this age and stage, probably for the last 20 years, I've found my location and I know who I am, what I am, how I am, where I'm going, and I know how to get there. So going off that, way back, and I think 1989 was when you said, they don't pay me to be humble. Right. Now it feels like there are people that are almost calling for you to be that. Yeah. Why is this idea of knowing who you are, not necessarily being humble, one of the things that propels you? Um, when I said that, that was because I was, I was a grown dog out there on that field. Like, I'm not going to be humble about what I got and the gifts that I have. I ain't never seen nobody open a present on Christmas and say, oh, that was so sweet. No. Oh, you see what I got? Yeah. I, 
I got a gift that I've opened and I'm thankful and proud of it. You don't think I'm going to shout and rejoice and, 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 and do my thing because of this gift that God has given me? No, that's what I meant yeah. by that. I got a tremendous gift and I know it, gift, and I perfected it by hard work, focus, and dedication. Mm-hmm. I also I think- perfected it with hard work, focus, and dedication. Yeah. When you're good at something and you know you're good at that thing, for whatever reason, it makes people uncomfortable if you vocalize that you're good at something. Mm-hmm. And that speaks to that insecurity that maybe people feel when they're talking to you because they're like, well, wait a minute. They're, He's supposed to not be all of this no. because I don't feel like I'm all of this. True. There lies the quote, don't allow my confidence to offend your insecurity. There lies the quote. That's where that quote derived from. Mm-hmm. And I can- don't allow my confidence to offend your insecurities. If you are an INTJ, please comment below that phrase. I want to see one INTJ comment that don't allow my confidence to offend your insecurities. FI child God complex. Can't. I can't. I ain't got nothing to do with that, whatever you're going through. Because I'm going to be me. Mm -hmm. And I'm mandated to be me. Um, I'm pleasing God, not man. Now, if I'm pleasing God and God is happy and you tripping, that's a problem with you. That ain't me. Because I, all I want to hear God say is, well done, my faithful servant. And I've heard him say that a multiplicity of times. So you got a problem. And that ain't on me. That's, that's on you. Me. That ain't on me. You that's got on a you. problem. So you did this article in the 80s, and I want to read the quote oh my to you. God. Because it's, going a, back to the 80s? it's a great quote okay. that applies to you right now, which is why I loved reading it so much. So this is in a Sports Illustrated article. You said, all my life I've been the man. I've been in the spotlight at every level. It's just a bigger spotlight. I learned the system in college. How do you think defensive backs get attention? How do you think Jim McMahon made so many millions? I learned the system in college. Oh, God. Millions. They don't pay anybody to be humble. Some people will come out to see me do well. Some people will come out to see me get run over. But love me or hate me, they're going to come out. Wow. I'm a businessman now. And the product is me. Prime time. God does good. So can you put some hand claps in the edit? The edit Absolutely. Edit? Give it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God. <laughs> that, was a, that was a young prime. But and I wow. say this to illustrate prime. that this person you are now is in so many ways who you have always been. True. What comes to your mind hearing that over 30 years later? Wisdom. I didn't know I had that type of wisdom at that age mm-hmm. because... What people wanted to see was prime. I can remember, and I'm not going to talk about what people wanted. As any gentleman's name, very popular. Um, uh, talking per- about popularity, TFI. personality, television personality, interviewed me in San Francisco. I mean, I'm defense player of the year. We went in, you know, we Super Bowl bound, and he wanted to interview Prime, and I gave him Di. The interview never aired. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted prime that means showboating crazy prime his persona he gave him the INTJ that's why a lot of INTJs run around hiding who they really are because I didn't give him what he wanted I gave him the but he didn't want that you should have just told me you want that and not just come to interview me and then never air so I looked at him sideways from then on yeah. Yeah. So, so you you just wanted the puppet show. You see so that you wanted. You ain't wanted. You wanted the puppet show, the persona he created. You want the real, calculated, future focus, seeing through the end, finishing. INTJ. You didn't want that guy. You wanted the monkey. I want to get it? No, me, because I'm trying to get you me, but you don't want me. You want Prime. Right. You should have said that. You wanted the persona instead of the thing that was the real, genuine, right? So you're saying how you said, you know, I know people are going to come out, some to see me win, some because they want to see they me still get whatever. Are. And it's the same. I feel yeah. like there are some people that watch your games because they actually want to see you all lose. That's right. I think 9.3 million did. Yeah. yeah TFI some more. Probably three quarters of that wanted to see us win. It's a small portion of that wanted to see us defeated. But I'm cool with that because in that process, they get to see all our kids. And the sponsors get to see our kids. I mean, potential NILs get to see our kids. Um, so I absolutely love it because 
I could attract them, but the kids are gonna hold them. Mm-hmm. And I love that. All right, so he's a mastermind of this whole Colorado shit. He's a mastermind here. He's well, Dion. Well done, my sir. Well done. But I bet there's a lot of INTJs out there that have to play onto the persona they have created because no one really likes that boring, calculated, future focused, meticulous, analytical person. You know, they like that funny, crazy, doing stupid shit, putting on the show type of them. But that's not really who they are. They're just doing that, and you're being tricked. You're being tricked, and that's what Dion has done, and he's made an ass load of money by doing it. And I guarantee there's a lot of INTJs out there that do the same fucking thing. But this is a good one. Um, on the Instagram, I'm going to go with that. He is a three, an achiever, um, wing four. Okay, I'm going to go with that. But with that being said, Let's go ahead. He was obviously journey focused. We hit so many of those, but we were just enjoying Dion talking. Um, he's pragmatic. He's rebellious. He's contrarian. He doesn't give a fuck about breaking no damn rules. It's all about Dion over everybody else. That's F I. Um, Dion is systematic. Okay, he talks about that. Um, we, we it's the same formula. We've been doing it since uh, since we were a kid, and then high school, and then from Jackson State. So, systematic, he's obviously abstract. This man believes in infinite possibilities. He believes that he can do fucking anything, okay? That is a huge sign of abstract, okay? And he's responding. Dion, Dion is an introvert. Dion is an introvert, okay? Prime, <laughs> his alter ego is not. And you can see the, the, the amazing blend of this. Because you can see him initiating. So you might actually get thrown off and actually type this guy wrong because he does initiate. But what he has done is he has worked on himself so well that, that he's blended the two together all into one. So we got Deion Sanders as an INTJ. Okay. And it makes a lot of sense for the shit that he's done. Um, he's going to be a 3W4. And if you watch our video, you. We have on cognitive function, you will learn that NI is the ability to transform yourself. Um, me and Thomas went in depth on that. Um, that's the advanced version is the ability to transform yourself. I say that it's brainwashing. Like I can literally brainwash myself to do shit. Okay. And as long as I keep thinking about it and just keep thinking about it, I almost change into something, you know, it's just, just, it's crazy. Um, it's like I think more is more into neuroplasticity and stuff like that, but um, that's the whole ni here. Um, we got Deion Sanders is an INTJ three W four. This has been an absolute pleasure. You know, um, comment below what you thought his type was. Um, like, comment, subscribe, and drop a celebrity you guys would like us to type. Um, I think we got a couple of other ones we need to do, but I wanted to get Dion out because he's been big in the media, and I absolutely love Dion. Myself, so yeah. This is Mongolian Mindset, and we are out.